should do something on that bass. What do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to House of Destiny and welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Charlie C.J. Jordan, a.k.a. Charles of the Ritz. This is Perspectives of the Prophetic. God has given me a very powerful word today, guys, and he really wanted me to deliver this to you. It's a short word, but it's a word that he really wants us to grasp, to understand and receive simply. And this is the word. You are great. Greater is he who is within us than any and everything that is in or of this world. We are great, okay? But before we get into this message, guys, I want to prophesy. I want you to join with me and in prophesying the victory that God has given you and I because he truly has given us the victory. Let's do it. Come on. Come on, it's a very simple song. And it goes a little bit like this. Victory for you and me. He's given us victory for you and me. Victory for you and me. That's what he's done. Victory. Come on, CJ. For you and me. I used to do it like this. V I C T O R Y. That's what is given to you and I. V I C T O R Y. That's what is given to you and I. P R O V I D E. He has provided for you and me. P R O V I D E. He has provided for you and me. Let me prophesy. That's what he's done for us. Woo! everyone that is what we truly have so i hear you shouting receive it you truly have the victory come on god is good everybody god is good wow guys i really hope you enjoyed that i just had to rearrange some things because as you notice i had my headphones on and the reason why i had headphones on is because that enables me to hear so i can monitor myself as i am prophesying and playing my instrument because if i don't have those headphones on i have to be able to hear and so these monitors will feed back into this mic so that's the reason why but come on let's jump right into this word i've titled this the prophetic nature of man because we are truly created to be prophetic we are truly created to be awesome everybody 
really to be awesome. And God really wants us to understand this and to receive this because of the times that we are in. We know that Christ is coming back very soon. We know this. He is coming back. But so many in the body of Christ, they are waiting for the rapture. They said, please, God, take us out of here. God is saying, no, no, no. I've saved you for this moment. These moments, I place you here for these very, for this very reason, for this season, in these moments. Why? Because he's given us everything that we need. We are well able to do all that God has given us, what God has predestined to us, what God has proclaimed and anointed us with. We are well able to do it, everyone. And so this is why this message is so important. We are truly a prophetic people. We were created to see, not just with these natural eyes. No, yes, that's a precious gift. Without a doubt, that's a very precious gift. But God gave us insight and foresight. He gave us the ability to see what he sees. No other created being have that ability, not the angels in heaven, and definitely not the animals on this earth. No, we have the ability to perceive, the ability to see what God wants us to see. You see, in Hosea chapter 4, okay, verse 6, six I'm just going to read the first line because it's very important what this line is saying. My people are destroyed or other translations say, my people are, um, well, let's say destroyed. I can't even think of the other translation right now. Perish, that is. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay? For lack of knowledge. Well, that word knowledge there in the Hebrew actually means perception. We perish or we are destroyed for the lack of perception. You see, we were created. To see that the ver- that was the very first thing that Satan went after in the garden when he went after Adam and Eve to take away their ability to perceive. Because once that once that happened, what happened to Adam and Eve? What did they do? They looked at their nakedness. They saw themselves naked. They begin to look at their weakness. They begin to look at this outer shell which wasn't created. You see, this outer shell wasn't created. It was formed. But we were created in his image and according to his likeness. So before we were placed in this shell, we were prophetically established. For it says it in Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28, how let us make God, let's read that. Let's read it right now. I'm I'm just going to go to that. I'm going to read this scripture because I think it's important. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. This is the New King James Version that I'm reading from. Then God said, let us make man, Adam, in our image. He never said that about the other animals. He never said that about the angels. He said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God gave us that authority to have complete dominion over everything, everything that is of this world, in this world. Come on, everybody. That's why greater is he who is within us than he or this or that that is of or in this world. We are greater, everyone. Okay. And it goes on. So God created Adam, man, in his image. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay. Come on. We were one. We were one, everybody. Then God blessed them and God said to them, this is powerful, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over everything that moves upon the earth. So God told us to be fruitful and multiply. What is it that man, mortal man is trying to determine and trying to do? 
They have said it. They have completely said it and they have shown it. They said with the Georgia Godstones that we have to keep the Earth's population at 500 million. Who are you? mere model man to determine and to go against the word of God, to say in front of God, to stand in front of God and say, no, uh -uh. we will no longer be fruitful and we will no longer allow anyone to multiply. Oh, come on, everybody. How many knows that that right there is from the pit of hell? And we have the authority to reverse what they have tried to do. We have the complete authority to reverse it. So God told us to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. This message is about us returning to who we really are. Returning to the fact that we have complete dominion. God wants us to understand that we are great. Perception is the key. You see, with all of the prognosticating that's going on, with all of the prophets of Baal spewing and regurgitating all of the wickedness, spreading all of this fear and division, this is the perfect time, church, for us to step up and say, wait a minute, we've got something to say that Jesus is on his way. But before he manifests in the flesh, we will make a way. For all to see that Jesus is alive in you and me. So come on, everybody. Come to victory. <laughs> this just came out of me, everybody. Let's just drop out of me. So in other words, what I'm trying to say, everybody, is that though they have determined all of this mess, though they have said that they are going to do all of this, we have the authority to stop them right in their tracks and to decree, no, uh-uh, because see, Christ is alive in us and Christ is being manifested not only in us, but through us and he will save all that will call unto his name. Guys, guys, it is time for us to step into this. We have to have perception. With all of this garbage that's going on, with all of this that is happening, we have to perceive. We have to perceive. Perception is the key, guys. I was looking through the, uh, through the Bible, and I'm going to give two examples of two individuals from the Old Testament that had perception. They perceived that if they could perceive that God was in their midst, or if they could perceive that they were being bamboozled and not being in Christ, how much more are we able to perceive this that the enemy is trying to do or that that God is doing? We have to perceive it because, see, in perceiving, we have so many in the body of Christ. Now, this devil has been so crafty. Now he's got us really pointing fingers at each other. You know how many times Kim was called a false prophet? Man, he was called a false prophet so many times you can't even count it on a thousand fingers. <laughs> you can't even count. He was called a false prophet. He's still being called a false prophet. There are people out there that are pointing people at prophets today that I know that are prophets. Now, are they perfect? No. We are all not perfect, but we are. You're a false prophet, and I'm here to tear you down. I'm here to bring you down. That's what the devil wants. He wants us to be able to do that because, see, when we are divided and we are bickering amongst each other, he can further advance his plan. But no longer, church, no longer house of destiny because, see, we are unto his madness. We have seen it and now we are calling it out and we are putting it underneath our feet. A small remnant can make a huge difference for the whole world. How many can believe that, that us, us few? We can change this thing like that. Yes, we can. Two people in the Old Testament that have, that have uh, perception. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 9. This is the Shulamite woman. Elisha was in her town. He was walking by. He was just chilling and walking by, doing what Elisha did at that time, just being Elisha, just being a man. All right. But all of a sudden, she perceived something. Let's read it. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Second Kings chapter four, verse nine. This is what she said to her husband. 
And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. In her perception, when she perceived that he was truly a prophet, a man of God, what did she do? She said, God is in our midst, so I'm going to bring God into my house. Because I know that once I get God in my house, my house, my whole house will be blessed. And that's exactly what happened. Her needs were met. Her needs were met. When we perceive God in situations that it doesn't appear to be God, when we perceive it and we receive him, your house will be blessed. You will be blessed. Perception is the key. Let's look at Nehemiah. God commissioned him to build the wall. And he used Cyrus to say, look, go and build the wall. Build that wall back up. I give you the permission. You know what it says out of Isaiah 45? That, that Cyrus was a man that God called his anointed. Okay, so Cyrus released Nehemiah to go build that wall, but he had some enemies. He had some people that didn't want that to happen. These guys, now I might butcher these names, guys, okay? But Samballot, Tobiah, and Gershom the Arab, they didn't want this to go down. So they kept trying to get Nehemiah to come and spend some time with him, okay, with them. They kept, hey, hey, Nehemiah, come on over here, man, let's kick. Nehemiah said, no. Uh -uh. Guys, I have, a, I have a serious mandate from God. I, I got to build this wall. If you guys want to spend some time with me, why don't you just get up off your tails and come help me build this wall? Okay, because I ain't got time for that silliness. Nehemiah was about God's business, everybody. So you know what they did, Sam Bala, Tobiah, and Geshem? They hired this prophet, this man by the name of Shemaiah. Now, I might have mispronounced that, but let's go. Somehow the son of Deliah to deceive and trick him. So you know what he did? He tried to send a word. He tried to say, hey, this is what God wants you to do. But what did Nehemiah say? Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 12. This is what Nehemiah did. He said, then I perceived that God had not sent Shemaiah at all. God didn't send him. But that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sam Ballot had hired him. So he perceived that so-called friends, his boys, was really in his corner, but they wasn't. He had perception and he saw the enemy from a distance. Perception is the key. If they could do it in the Old Testament, how much more can we do it in Christ? Come on, everybody. This is the time to truly step into who you really are. For you are great. I'm going to say it again. You are great. Greater is he who is within us than he and it of whatever is in or of this world. Come on. God created us so differently, everyone. He created us so differently. We are greater than the angels. Yes, we are. We are greater in, than the angels. You can read this in Hebrews. You've read it before. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. I'm just going to read verse 7 and verse 14. It says, And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. And then in verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those, for us, who will inherit salvation? That's who the angels are, okay? They are sent to help us. It's that simple, everyone. Know who you are. Know who you are. You know, so many people have gone to generals. So many people have gone to big ministries so that they can be blessed by these big ministries. Nothing wrong with this. But what God is saying to and through me today, everyone, God, you know the reason why God sent us to Detroit and told Kim to stop his itinerant ministry, his itinerant form of ministry. If you've listened to my first teachings, obedience versus sacrifice, you heard that God sent us there for this reason. 
People are coming to you, Kim, to hear from me. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. I want you to gather my people together and y'all worship me corporately so that they can come into my presence so I can speak to them individually. And that's what we did. That's what we did. God is saying, yes, he gave us the fivefold ministry, but that is to equip the church. But it's not for us to go and say, no, only you have what God has for me. What is it that God has for me, sir? Apostle or prophet or evangelist or pastor or teacher. What is it? No, 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 no. God says, "Uh, uh-uh. I want my people to know that all my sheep can hear my voice. And all of my sheep are powerful. That we are all created in his image and according to his likeness. So the angels are here to serve us. That's what they are here to do. Okay? That's what they are here to do. Now, we have angels that they call themselves princes. Okay? Principalities. All right? This is what Paul wrote about these principalities. This is what he says. He says, Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Okay? Principalities against powers, against the rulers of the, of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So our fight is with them. Our fight is with them. But you know what? Later on in chapter 6, okay, he says, but put on the full armor of God so that you can be able to stand against these principalities, to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And when you have that full armor on, Keep it on. And when you have this, then they must and will submit to the will of God. Guys, we are greater. We are greater. Know this, everyone. Know who you are in Christ. Know it. Look here. David had a revelation and got a word about how great we are. You know where it says when David said, we are are fearfully and wonderfully made. We truly are. David, not being in Christ, even though Christ was in him, he was a type and shadow of us today. David got a revelation of how great we are. This This is what God revealed to him. Let's go to Psalm chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 4 through 9. Check this out, everyone. Check this out. What is man, and I'm going to end with this, what is man that you are mindful of him? Okay? All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this somewhat in the first person. Okay? I'm going to apply this to you and I. What is man, what is it about us that you are so mindful of us, oh God? (laughs) What is it? And the son of man, the children of man, talking about us, because this son is not capitalized. He's talking about the offspring of man. That you visit us. Okay? For you have made us a little lower than the angels. Now, that word for angels in the Hebrew is Elohim, which is a word for God. But when you look up that word in the Hebrew, and it's translated according to the scripture, God is not capitalized. Wow, man, this is so good. Are you feeling what I'm feeling right now? You have to understand who you are and how he sees us. We have to know this is how God, the creator of everything, the God of this universe, the almighty God, El Shaddai, this is how he sees you and me. You have made us a little lower than Elohim, than yourself. And you have crowned us with glory and honor. And you have made us to have dominion over the works of your hand. He has crowned us with this glory and honor. And he has given us dominion over the works of his hand. You have put all things under our feet. All sheep, all oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. 
that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is all. No, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Let's break down those words here. In, and I, I broke down these five words out of Psalm 8. Listen to this. Is it Psalm 8? Yeah, Psalm 8. <laughs> Listen to this. Number one, when it says man, that word means mortal man, person, mankind. That's you and I. Son means children of men. Okay? Our offspring. Okay? Number three, visit. You know what that means? He has appointed, he has looked after, and he has taken care of. So we are surrounded by his protection, everybody. Okay? Number four, lower than the angels, Elohim, that's God. A little lower than God. And what I mean when I say the small God in that, in, in that text, because we are a little less than God himself, the almighty God. We are one click below him. Okay, and then number five, crowned means to surround us and he has bestowed upon us honor and glory. Bestow actually means to present as a gift and as an honor. So we have been crowned, surrounded and bestowed upon us honor and glory. Now, for which of the angels did God ever do this for? None. The animals, they are created after their own kind. We are created in his image and according to his likeness, not according to our own kind. I'm going to end with this, okay? Genesis chapter 1, 21 through 25 so that we can solidify how great we are, that we truly are greater than any other creation that God has created. Genesis 1, 21 through 25 says, So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves, with which the waters are bounded, according to their kind, not according to his likeness, but according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its kind, not in his likeness, but their kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. Do you hear the birds or the animals in the seas? Do you see them saying, oh, man, we got to stop, man. There's too many of us. So we're going to slow this down a little bit. We're going to slow this down a little bit. That's how ludicrous this, this, these demons and these people that have followed these demons that try to come against the word of God and then try to stop what God has already ordained. It's already completed. What we need to do is step into it and we need to look these devils right in their eye and say, be still, be quiet, be beneath us and be cast into the sea. It's time for us to do this because he is coming back, but he's coming back for a beautiful, a beautiful a bride that knows exactly who she is, knows exactly who she is. That's us. We got to know who we are, everyone. OK, then God said, let the earth not let us, but let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind. Cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind, their kind. And they come from the earth. And it was so. And God made the peace of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Everything else was created according to its kind. But we were created according to his likeness. His likeness. Guys, what God sees, he wants you to see. He has allotted and gifted us and measured out anointings and giftings for each and every one of us. Some will do this, some will do that. 
Some may look like they're doing something greater than what you're doing, but see, God says he's not a respecter of persons. He's not going to pour out upon us more than what we can receive. What we need to understand is that, God, what you have for me, I know it's great. I know that, God, what you have for that person, I know it's great. It looks like that person is picking up a big Mack truck, and I'm only picking up a little Nissan truck. But that's okay, because we are both flowing in you, so it doesn't matter. Come on, everybody. It doesn't matter. We are great. We are truly great. So notice everyone, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We were created prophetically in Genesis 1. And then in Genesis 2, he formed us from the ground. And this shell that we have here came from the dust of the ground. But know that this is limited. This is not who we are. Who we truly are is we are created and we are in his image and we are created according to his likeness. You can prophesy. You can raise the dead. You can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. It's not that they might recover, but they shall recover. You see, guys, it's time for us to know who we are, and it's time for us to be bold. I'm going to end with this short little testimony. I was, I was just in Tampa Bay. I was there with uh, Delora and Dennis O'Brien. We was doing our gathering meetings that we're doing. It was a Sunday uh, 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 night meeting that we did. We call it Solomon's Porch. And so I was flying back on that Monday. And so I was at a restaurant bar there at the Tampa International Airport. I was there. And so I was sitting at the bar and I was and I had some French fries and I was drinking a glass of wine. So I hope no one gets, you know, gets offended because I like to drink wine. But, hey, I drink wine. It's not, I'm not a drunkard, so I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm not ashamed to say it. If you got a problem with it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But God, check out what God did with this guy sitting at a bar at a restaurant, and it was a bar restaurant, and I was having a glass of wine with some french fries. A young lady came over to me. She she was about 24 or 25 years old. She was tattooed up, man. She had ear piercings. She had tongue piercings. She had a pierce through a top lip, bottom lip. I mean, she was pierced up, okay? All right, and she was clearly a young lady of the world. But all of a sudden now, God, I bought a shirt, and it's got Jesus written across the front of it. Jesus, big capital letters. Jesus. And on the back, it says, a house divided cannot stand. And what God has instructed me to do, he's instructed me to wear this every time I fly. So every time I'm in the airport, I got this shirt and I'm walking. And I got Jesus across. So I'm letting everybody know, Jesus, Jesus is in your midst. Now, I'm not saying that I'm Jesus, but I carry him on the inside. See, you got to understand who you are. Greater is he who is within you than he that is of and in this world. So this is what I've been doing. And man, the opportunity to witness, the opportunity to talk about Jesus, the opportunity to just to show forth and to bring forth love is just increasing every time I fly now. So I'm sitting in this restaurant. This young lady sat next to me. And all of a sudden, the anointing of God falls. And we get into a conversation. And then we started talking about God. And then she started talking about the things that were affecting her. It was almost like she couldn't help herself. And all I was doing was listening. And then God began to give me the words. And I began to minister to this young lady. The restaurant was full of people. Tampa International Airport. Tampa International Airport. All of a sudden, tears started coming down this young lady's face. And she said, could you please pray for me? And I said, come on, stand up. Because see, the spirit of salvation entered. The spirit of deliverance entered that restaurant with me having a glass of wine, eating some French fries. Don't be hung up on religion. Don't be hung up on the cares of this world, on the little things that doesn't matter. Be led by his spirit. So you know what we did? Right in front of a full restaurant, we grabbed hands, we stood up. I grabbed her hands and I began to pray the prayer of salvation over this young lady. This lady was weeping and receiving Christ right in front of people. People were looking, man, what's going on here? I didn't care. I didn't care what they thought. 
I didn't care if someone would have came over to me. Hey, man, you know, this is separation of church and uh, airport. I would have finished my prayer and said, hey, man, separate right now because I ain't got time for that right now. We have to be bold. I led this precious young soul into the presence of Jesus Christ right there at an airport in a restaurant. It's time that you know who you are. So God is wanting me to tell you, be bold. Be bold. Okay? Step into who you are. Do what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. Do it on a daily basis and watch and see how bold you become. Watch and see how clear you will begin to hear. Watch and see how you will be able to discern and know and recognize the good, the, per, uh, the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 said, and, 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 and I don't have it written down here. But it says we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. For this is our reasonable service. This is something that we have to do every day. We should do it every day. I'm going to end with this because I don't want to go through long. I'm already at 30, 31 minutes. But this is something that we should do every day. And when you do this, the, the, the word goes on and say, and do not be conformed to this world. What if you do this on a daily basis? If you give God five minutes every day of your time, five minutes, and just say, God, I'm giving this five minutes all to you. You watch and see what begins to happen because your mind will begin to be transformed. A metamorphosis will take place. And then you want want to conform to the things of this world because then you will recognize and discern that the things of this world are truly, truly evil and against you. So you ain't going to conform to that. Now you're going to be able to discern what God is doing, where God is at, where God wants you to go, what God wants you to say, what God wants you to do, how he wants you to vote, how he wants you to do everything. In every area of your life, you will be able to discern the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Okay? Know who you are. Know who you are. Know that you are great. We are prophetic people. We were created to see. We were created to see. And in seeing, you'll be able to witness You'll be able to go to a person's past and be able to pull them out of that past because that past has them trapped. And that's the reason why they are bound up in there now. And once you go to that past and you reveal the ugliness of that past, well, that past and, and God uses you to show this is what the enemy meant. That will release them. And now their presence, they will say, oh, my God, we want to receive you. And then they will receive Christ and then their future will begin to be revealed. Their future will begin to be revealed. So anyway, hey, I hope this really bless you. I can feel the presence of God right now. I can feel his presence right now, guys. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow into this word. I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow into your future. To sow into the fact that God, you're going to show me. If you don't know what it is that you are here to do, God is going to show you. God is going to open your eyes. Just like Paul said in uh, Ephesians chapter 1. That your eyes will be enlightened. They will be enlightened. And you will know the glorious inheritance of all of us saints that are in Christ Jesus. Your eyes will be enlightened. Sow a seed right now so that you can become all that God has truly called you to be. Okay? Information is scrolling along the bottom there. It's very easy. You've done it before. If this is your first time, okay, hearing this message, checking out this channel, coming to House of Destiny. If this is your first time, you don't understand about giving yourself. I don't know if I, I want you to do this. If you're a little bit skittish or a little bit, like, I don't want to give any money. Okay, take a button off your shirt. Or you know what you can do? You can sew a word. What you can sow is this. You can say, God, I trust you. God, show me. Make that your offering right now. If you're a little concerned about giving money, you don't know what this is all about. Just sow a word of faith. Show me, Lord God, what I am here to do. And you watch and see what will happen. Watch and see what will happen, okay? So, all right. Let me pray over this offering. Lord God, I just thank you for this word. 
I thank you for this time. I thank you for your presence. I thank you that our eyes are truly opening up and that we are stepping into all that you have called us to be. That we have become the very weapons that you have sent us here to do, to, to subdue and to have dominion and to tell these devils to stop in their tracks so that we can go to the lost, so that your light will truly shine through each and every one of us and many shall come into your presence and receive you as Lord. Lord God, we thank you for this. We thank you. Now let this that they sow multiply. Let it multiply. Let it continue to multiply. And that an increase will surely, and multiplication will surely be the MO of each and every one of us. We pray this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Okay, so anyway, guys, I love you guys. I want you to know this truly. I say it all the time. You are truly somewhere in the future and you look so much better than all this garbage that's going on. And when J-E-S-U-S is truly in effect, Jesus is by your side, my side, our side. We put that devil in check. This is The Ritz. I love you guys. I see you next time. Peace.